Matt Abbott or Miss Toria Garbot. Um, however, um, tonight you've got me, Louise Bazakala, who will be presenting. I feel a little bit like I'm on MTV. Woo! Poetry TV. Well, whatever, it's cool anyway, isn't it? Um, so, Matt suggested that uh, for the first minute I read a poem, you know, just to wait for people to join. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to read a, a very short poem for you while we wait for all the amazing audience to join us and for Carla to come online. Um, now, Carla, who I'm interviewing tonight, um, she supported me with my book launch, Bird Street, um, earlier in the year. So I thought I would just pick something from Bird Street while we're waiting. Um, this poem's called Nuclear, and it's about an alternative uh, form of energy. Nuclear, also known as, my kiss is hotter than your kiss. Let's shave our heads, buzz cut, fingertips to stubble. I'm like some hot Sinead O'Connor, you look like your trouble. Electrodes on, they'll wire us up. Let's volunteer as lab rats, measuring our chemistry. Colanders as sun hats, wire, snakes, circuit breaks, electro coil for her. We don't even need to touch. Magnetic charge from here. We'll blow their drones and metronomes and Geiger counters right up. We'll fry our dreams, our cum cum screens, make burned out cities light up. Let's shave our heads. Please spread your legs. It's in the name of science. White cobes ram a probe up. Salute the World Alliance. We'll make wind farms redundant, no oil to lubricate. I touch your wrist, the grid lights up like bulbs illuminate. Now at the heart of every new organic power station are a couple of humanoids like us screwing for the nation. Yeah, okay, thank you, crowd goes wild. That's one of my points from Bird Street. Um, I don't know much about science. I don't know if you can harness human sexual chemistry in order to power a power station, but um, maybe you can. Maybe someone could write that in the comments. Uh, oh, quite a few people are joining us now. That's lovely. Um, okay, so I'll, I'll start to introduce them. Um, so, welcome to Nymphs and Fugs Insta. Uh, tonight I'm going to be chatting with Carla Mella, also known as Poetry for People, Poetry for the People. Um, I love um, Carla's work. I uh, saw her on the Wigan scene and thought, oh, she's got some well promise. And she just seemed to get better and better and better. And now I think she's kind of like on her way to some really good stuff with her writing and her performance. So I'm going to try and like connect her now. Like teleportation bit where the screen splits. Let's have a little go. Pressing the smiley face. Oh, that's not quite right, is it? Press the wrong smiley face. Let's have a little look. Oh, there we go. There we go. There's, there's Carla. Send that. Be joining us any moment, flying in on helicopter or, or by the power of the internet. Hey! <laughs> Hello, Carla, can you hear me? Yeah, I think I need to send my camera around. Let me have a look. I don't. Well, it was all right when you just started talking. Oh, can you see me? I can now. Ah, I can't see myself, so maybe that's, maybe that's a good thing. Well, you're looking absolutely lovely. Ah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank you. Uh, you're in shot and everything. It's all good. Uh, ah, um, good. How are you feeling today, Carla? I'm all right, yeah. I almost got some like yogurt pots and string ready for if this didn't work. So I thought, because we both live in Wigan, we could just old school and some yogurt pots, do it like that. But it worked. So yeah, it's fine. in case the um, connection goes faulty. Yeah, yeah, you know what you used to do when you were kids? That kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, I've done that. Ah. Yeah. Um, so, Carla, my first question for you is. Where are you from? Because I know you're from Wigan, because I've seen you doing poetry here. Tell us a bit, a little bit about that. 
So I'm from a little town near Halifax called Sorby Bridge, which is like Hebden Bridge's not so glamorous sister. Um, so it's just like a little northern town on the way to, uh, to Leeds, sort of halfway between Manchester and Halifax. Um, and then I lived for a while in a little seaside town called Wivensea, which is just near Hull. Um, so I've just got a really mish mash accent and a love for fish and chips for living by the seaside. <laughs> yeah. um, and then I've ended up in Wigan of all places, why not? I think so. like um, that's the thing about um, poetry sometimes. You can be referred to as a local poet if you're kind of performing in your own town and then if you move away suddenly you're a bit glamorous um yeah if you go from north to south to north um yeah. so being a bit of a traveler you get to uh, float around all the worlds really yeah and i've picked all the most exciting places to do it you know halifax hull wigan when where will i go next <laughs> big up the north i'm excited about that um <laughs> What, thinking about you on poetry then, so um, would you say you found poetry or did poetry find you? Ooh, that's a really philosophical question. Um, I, I used to write poetry when I was a kid. I think everyone used to write poetry when they was a kid, but quite obsessively. Oh, one of my headphones has fallen out. Um, I don't know. I sort of did it as a teenager, which I'm really glad that I don't have any record of that because I remember it being a bit a bit emo, very um, dark poetry. Um, and then I've sort of picked it up again as I've got older. Um, I, don't, I don't know, I've always enjoyed reading and I don't think I have enough of a concentration span to, to write like anything that's particularly long because I'll write something and then I'm like, I want to do something else now. So poetry just kind of fits, um, fits the way I write, I guess. So, yeah. And uh, tell us about your first time. Did you go to a slam or something by accident early on in your poetry days? Yeah, the first time I read poetry was at a competitive <laughs> slam in Manchester because I didn't understand what it was. Um, so I rocked up and there was all these like dead good poets that had been practising for years and I stood there with like a little piece of paper on the stage with like one poem and it was pretty awful to be honest um, and it, it did put me off for a while and then I realised it just wasn't the natural the natural order of things um, and sort of started from the from the bottom up. Yeah, I mean everyone was nice about it when I was at the farm. <laughs> yeah everyone was lovely about it anyway so um, it was all right. Oh it's all right. Did you enjoy being at the slam watching the other poets or were you just too nervous about your own performance? No, no, I did really enjoy watching the others. Yeah, I was really nervous. Um, I think I'm a bit of a nervous performer. Um, but yeah, I did enjoy it and it was nice. What do you prefer the most? Do you like writing the poetry or do you like performing it or do you like the idea of being published? Um, I think I prefer writing it. I think once I'm comfortable with something um, and practice performing it, then I enjoy performing it. I think it's just, it's not something that comes naturally to me. I know a lot of poets are sort of ex drama students, and they're very like, ah, um, and I'm not I'm not so good at that. Um, but it's it's one of the things that I guess you learn, isn't it? So yeah, yeah. I think I prefer writing it. I don't think you have to be. You don't have to be. You have to find your own way, don't you? Your own way. Yeah sharing your personal words. Uh, speaking of which, are you ready for a poem? Yeah, yeah, I'll do one. Right. I don't know which one to start with. It's excited. I'm going to start with one called Half a Cancala, which is about a nickname that I had at school of Half a Cancala and about how I yeah, got that nickname. Half a Cancala, they called me. But I disagreed. Look here, see, it was special brew. It's fucking lethal, washed down with three shots of some liqueur that tastes like peach and smelt like treacle. Let's not forget all the knockoff L&Bs, my mate's mum had sold us cheap. In dodgy packaging, flecks were brown where they got wet and then dried out. What were even in them? I couldn't really say. They were rancid, but the Nicky Rush were ace. The air to smoke like inhaling glass, but we only paid two quid a pack. They smelt like fish. 
but then so did the whole of that fucking town. So we sucked in mould, drank stolen beer on park, on beach, on North End Pier, and I've got this nickname, Half a Can Carla. I'd always wanted a nickname, but this one worked cool, and I got stuck with it for the last three years of school. And I remember the event well, because I want this smashed. I just pretended I was, because there were this lass I wanted so badly to hold her hand as I sat there sipping half of my can. So I pretended to fall over drunk so she'd help me stay upright because half a can Carla, it were better than Dyke. Thanks. Woo! <laughs> That's what's happening in living rooms across the Ah, room. thanks for me. <laughs> oh, I love that poem. That's so great. I feel like it's so rich with that and um, teenage years you know like rubbing about drinking on street corners i mean yes. I'm, I'm just kind of like talking about it with this warm tinted glow but i don't, I don't want my own children to do it you know <laughs> no we've definitely not done it ourselves of course not but <laughs> if we had it'd be something like that yeah I think um, I, I think I tweeted earlier on saying two can Carla because I remembered that poem but not that it was half a can. <laughs> I saw that and I felt really flattered and I was like, oh Louise thinks m more of me than I actually am, like two cans and I'd literally, I'd have been having my stomach pumps, terrible, half a can, you know, that was it. I thought half a can Carla would be quite a fun um, Twitter name but you've chosen to go for poetry for the people, it's like the name for your kind of social media stuff why did you choose that um i think when i started doing poems i just wanted to do sort of i guess they were poems that were for everyone so they were like dead short i mean they've got a little bit longer but when i first started out really short and um, sort of dead simple and it was just like poetry for people that maybe wouldn't normally read poetry or listen to poetry um like I've, I've got friends and stuff that it's not sort of normally their thing, but they're like, oh, I quite like um, some of your poetry. And, um, you know, there's obviously other poets that sort of get out there and make it really accessible. And and that was it really. And and, and I do kind of regret not having half a Kankala as my Twitter name now. And I'm wondering, is it too late? But <laughs> yeah, I think I'll have to stick with poetry for people now. Yeah, and like, um, I think there is something important about the idea of poetry for the people and about poetry that's accessible and poetry that people get on different levels. I think sometimes there's a snobbery around poetry that it should be very complex and it should be like a riddle and reread and reread and that's great and that can be part of poetry. But something that like you immediately connect to, like I immediately connect with your work, that's got so much value. Um, and talking about poetry for the people, you had a, a poem that went viral, didn't you? Did you have two poems that went viral or just the one? I did. It was just one and then we did like two more on the, on the back of it. I don't know if they went viral. I'm not, there's, there's like, you've got to have like a, a certain number of people you've reached for stuff to go viral and I can't, I can't remember what it is, but um, yeah, me and my partner, um, Tash, um, my fiance, not business partner, um, did a sort of poetry film um, at the beginning of lockdown. So I'd written a, a poem about sort of how I was feeling about everything. So obviously everything was rubbish, but people were being dead nice to people. So they were like, you know, like knocking around on the neighbours' doors, asking if they need any pasta or bog roll, if they've not already bought all of it. Um, and you were seeing this like really nice side of humanity. And I just kind of wanted to capture that um, in the poem. Um, and then Tash was like, oh, we should make a video out of it, which was really challenging when you're not allowed to leave your car. Um, so we just had to use like photo archive and a couple of shots of Wigan shot through uh, through my car window. Yeah, why not? I did have a few people shout at us in Tesco car park being like, get me off, get me off your camera. And we were like, sorry. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and that went viral. So yeah, it was dead good. Um, I knew I'd made it when my grand saw it on TV and rung me and I was like, I was dead excited then because I was like, oh. Um, we did, did um, oh, sorry. I saw it on TV, did you see it on the, did you end up going on BBC Breakfast? Yeah, it went on BBC Breakfast, which was exciting. We got interviewed in our front room, um, which was like one of the most nerve wracking things I think I've ever done. Um, 
but yeah, it was it was fun. Um, and then we did some bits for uh, CBBC and CBBS off the back of it, which was about how kids were feeling about lockdown. Um, because they don't really have, I suppose they don't have as much of a voice, do they? So just sort of capturing how they felt, which was a lot of interviewing my nieces and nephews and them just being like, it's dead rubbish. And I'm like, yeah, you're going to have to give me a bit more than that. <laughs> that um, but yeah, we're good. I really enjoyed it. And if we wanted to look at them poems, where would they be? Like, um, so I've got a website, which is carlamella.co.uk. Um, or they are on the Northern Heart Films website. So that's the company that made the videos. Ah, oh, cool. That's so cool. And then, like, if your name was Half a Can Carla, it would be more tricky for your children's work. You know, like, if you decided to do more work, yeah. the CB base probably wasn't as keen on that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You'd just have to pretend it was Fanta or something, wouldn't you? Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I only have that. Yeah, because bad teeth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. How, how do you feel about doing another poem? Yeah, I'll do another. Let me. Uh, so much chat. Um, because we were talking about kids' poems. This is definitely not a kids' poem. Uh, but it's sort of written from a, a perspective of, of a child. Um, so I'll read this, and it's called "There's a Junkie in Our Kitchen." There's a junkie in our bathroom, he stood over the sink, wide eyes on running water, he doesn't even blink. He's mumbling to himself, his hands are proper shaking, been washing them so long his nails have started flaking. There's a junkie in our kitchen, pacing up and down, he just won't stand still, fag hanging out of his mouth. There's a junkie in our living room, sat on our blue chenille settee, staring at the ringing house phone, chewing holes in his jumper sleeve. There's a junkie in our garden, he let me comb his hair, I put some clips and bows in and he let me leave them there. There were a junkie in our house, we were playing hide and seek, but he's nowhere to be found and I've been looking now for weeks. I ask about the junkie, they just say he's gone away. I don't know why or where, I hope he'll come back someday. There's no junkie in our house now to play fun games with me, fondly call me rat bag and sit down with us for tea. There's a man at my front door, he's familiar to me. He looks just like the junkie did, but different, older, clean. Thanks. Oh, I've got goosebumps on my arm then. Oh, thanks. Uh, Tori Garbutt described it as uh, like a, a, a junkie version of the tiger that came to tea, which I really enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that is a great line. That is a great, I, the repetition in it's beautiful and it's just like um, really heart, heart, well, I find it heartwarming because I, I think when you write about people who are, um, have a bad press, that that's one of the beautiful things about being a poet you can write about things and try and change people's perspective on it and see the people within um, yeah so. i think ch children have have a beautiful sort of way of looking at the world and um, so it's actually about a family member uh, from when i was younger that had a lot of addiction problems um but i just didn't see it as a kid like i just thought he was dead fun because he always wanted to play with me and do silly stuff and he was just like not like all the other boring grown-ups uh, and then you get older and sort of yeah, I guess you sort of look at the world a different way, but maybe you should keep a little bit of that innocence there because it's, it's quite nice. I think, like, um, one of the beauty of performing on this sort of a medium, you know, like the, this Instagram on your phone, is that you really kind of connect closer with these sort of more emotional poems. And mm -hmm. sometimes that's lost a bit in live performance. There's so much other stuff going on, but actually on a little screen, it works really nicely. Um, what about in terms of um, reading your work? A Little Bird's told me you might have a book deal. Yeah, I've got a book coming out um, next year. It's going to be now. So, yeah, I'm dead excited about that. So it'll be my first poetry collection. Um, and that'll be with Wrecking Ball Press. And I am still deciding on a name because every time I come up with one, I change my mind. So, uh, yeah. Any ideas? Let me know because I just keep changing my mind. Um, but yeah, that'll be out twenty twenty one. 
That's absolutely yeah. amazing. Wrecking Ball Press is yeah. great um, publishers. Like, it's real um, kind of other stars on there, like Tori Garbutt's on there, Shirley May's on there. I'm sure there's like a Hull's on there. And they're like all great poets up in the north. So that's wonderful. How did that come about? How did that happen for you? Um, I just dropped him an email <laughs> with some poems and was like, oh, yeah, don't know if this is the dumb thing, but here's some poems and I'd like to do a book. Um, and yeah, they were they were dead keen um, on sort of making that happen. I've got um, Tori Garbutt's been helping me out um, in sort of like working on it, which has been amazing because she's like my favourite poet, so that's so cool. Um, and she's a dead nice person as well. And yeah, I've just been sort of working on getting all these poems together and I'm dead excited. I think that's good for people to hear who like might be watching this now and they've got um, collections and poetry and not sure what to do with it. And that sometimes, yeah, you send off and you don't hear anything back for ages. And then sometimes you send something off and you get a great response. So I'll be so excited to see the book when it comes and comes to the line. Oh, thanks. Ah, that will be good. Do you want to do us another poem? Yeah. Do you know what? I'm going to do one that I've not done before because this is about, um, I've got ADHD, so it's a little bit about that, um, which is one of the reasons that I think I sort of cling to poetry rather than like longer writing because my attention span is just, it's not the best. <laughs> so it's just about that and um, sort of all the recommendations that you get when you've got... Um, when you've got ADHD, everyone always seems to have a bit of an input, so it's just about that. A spreadsheet is never going to reorganise the chaos in my brain. The very suggestion is somewhat insane. A list is never going to fix this mess inside my head. Practicality and positivity are not medication for my ADHD, and your inspirational quote isn't going to turn down the volume or lower the pitch. It's not going to scratch this itch. It won't cancel out the noise or stop the static so you can keep it and I'll just manage this manic. Green tea and meditation aren't a massive revelation. They're both bloody ancient, been going round for generations so stop acting like you're doing me a favour. Like you're some sort of mental health saviour by making these suggestions on how to improve my behaviour, my behaviour, my behaviour, my behaviour, like it's a choice, like I wake up in the morning and switch on that voice in my mind that never stops going to let me unwind, that makes me distracted when I'm trying to focus, that screams so loud, brain cell, hocus pocus. My mind is a busy roundabout with too many traffic lights and too many signs and too many junctions for me to decide what to do and where to begin and the car won't start and the engine's packed in and I don't have a license, I can't even drive. I'm in the wrong lane, not sure how to make it out alive. So thanks for the pointers and the tricks and the tips that I've already read up on and tried and then quit because your spreadsheets are boring and your green tea tastes like crap. So I'll stick with my neurodiversity and just try not to crash. Thank you. Oh, yeah. No, yeah, it's fairly new. I think I think I might have done it on a Zoom once, and that's it. So yeah, it's a good one. It's a good one. Ah, oh, thanks. Yeah, my partner's got ADHD, and I can be that person going, "Well, you know, if you had a diary, you put in these like, I'm not going to look at the stupid diary." <laughs> it's just, it's just more things to forget. Yeah, yeah. It's a nice idea, and I always try and use to put that, but yeah, forget. I forget. Yeah, Accept yourself and you and embrace the positivities of you. Someone actually said to me not that long ago, Are you ADHD? And I was a bit like, No, no, I don't think so. <laughs> you know, I was like, oh, you never know. <laughs> Who knows? And then I get to be neurodiverse and join with neurodiverse crew. crew. Um, <laughs> but before you were saying, like, Tori is one of your, uh, Tori Garbutt's one of your favourite poets and that like, she's helping you stuff with the book. Um, who would you say are your influences? books or poets or bands or artists what sort of thing gets you excited in the world around you and culture I think a bit of everything like I always think like 
other mediums influence other mediums so I think like music um definitely one films I really like people watching so I love people watching and I'll make up little stories in my head of what these people are up to and you know sometimes I just develop little characters and, and things like that um I've always been a, like a big reader um so I think like full length stories as well inspire inspire me in terms of poetry um in terms of other poets, I really like all the nymphs and fugs. Obviously yourself, Louise, I've got all your books. If anyone doesn't have them, you should buy them. It's the link on her Twitter, get on there. Um, John Cooper Clark, I really like, Matt Abbott. Um, yeah, I, I think I get inspired by anything and everything really, like the everyday. Um, I don't know, it's really hard. I think my brain just goes a lot so I think sort of anything that inspires it I'm like oh, I'll just write this down and and that's it really. Um, I like lots of um, people who do poetry also think about doing other things you know like uh, oh I'll do a bit of comedy or I'll do I'll try and like be like Kate uh, Tempest or um, sleep with mods and do some music or I'd really like to write a play or I'd really like to write a novel. Have you got other things that you're interested in doing artistically or you've, you, you've got your heart set on poetry at the moment? I'd love to be able to sing, but I'm awful. Like, I'm really, really awful. So definitely not that. And I'm not musical. Um, I did try I did try and do a comedy show at uh, my junior school uh, Leavers play in year six. And I think I think there was me, my cousin, and someone else, and we actually got first place. So I could oh, no. pick that up again. You know, <laughs> it was only 19 years ago. I might still be, uh, still be dead funny. Who knows? Um, but yeah, I guess just poetry. I mean, I started writing a book about 10 years ago that I'm probably never going to finish. Um, maybe I'll pick that up again um, again someday. That would be really good. Um, yeah, I don't know. I suppose I've not really... I've, I've just been focusing a lot on the, on the poems and not really thought about it. But if I could sing, I'd definitely be up for like making some music or whatever. But I'm really awful. I'm the same as you, Carla. I like it. I like a bit of karaoke. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I'm really awful at it, but yeah. Probably do it, haven't you? Have you got a karaoke poem? Um, I do have one, but it's on my phone, which I'm, I'm watching on now, so I'm like, oh, oh I, I can't read it. I'll have to save it for, for another time. Will it be in the book? It will definitely be in the book, yeah. Okay, yeah. we can enjoy that in the book. And have you got a final poem for us? Yeah, I have. Um, I'm wondering which ones to do. We don't have to be in final. Go about five minutes. I mean, you can do one, you can do two, whatever you want. Mm -hmm. yeah. I've got two more, which are short, fairly yeah. short, and they're new as well. I've not read them anywhere, so Ooh, it's a big, uh, be new. This one is called uh, Fairy Tales and Unwanted Mail. Penned in by Red Brick. Dilapidated fences, overgrown gardens, rise in bus fares, keep them at bay, walk for miles or suck it up and stay. Because far, far away is no but a bedtime story at the end of the day. Red to burns in box room bunk beds, textured wallpaper, damp and peeling, artex patterns up on ceiling, thinning carpets and the street light sleeps. Where charity shop curtains don't quite meet. Weights rest heavy on mum's fragile shoulders. Frail from a diet of beans on toast and 9p noodles. Pennies pinched but gas meter and new school shoes. Fairy tales fill little hearts with hope. But mums need their own to cope and dream of a week in Spain, all inclusive, but swim only in second-hand bath water and leaky washer suds, eat nothing but spuds and sunbathe under a brown parasol of final notice, last chance envelopes. Beautiful. I like it when I clap for you, because otherwise when you're the one doing the poem and no one claps and they just nod, it's just crap, in it? Like... <laughs> Silence. It's like having um, you like my own personal audience. So it's like I'm doing a gig just for you. Like, yeah, like, you could do it. It's great. Like, oh, I'm a, <laughs> it's good. It's good for your personal audience. Oh, and, and oh, you wanted to do another didn't you? Come on, let's. Have, what else have we got? I've got another short one. Yeah. Um. So this is about when you go on holiday as a kid, or oh, that's what it started out being about, and then it's just one of them poems that 
kind of start being about something else. So it's called Light Lighthouse. First one to see the lighthouse wins fuck all, other than to be the first one to see the lighthouse. I always have to sit in the middle. A human armrest, elbows fly into me as my sister turns the page of a magazine and my brother button bashes his Game Boy. The motorway is an endless stretch of lights whizzing by above my head, out the corner of my eye. I'm so small, they seem so high, like stars falling from the sky. Back roads loop and wind, and my siblings take it into. Every bend, one right, one left. I am middle ground, funny how we grew, and yet this theme remains a little bit different, but mostly the same. Thanks. Bravo, bravo. Oh, well done, Carla. I've really enjoyed talking to you and I've really enjoyed your poems. Um, one final question I just wanted to say is, so far then in your little poetry journey, um, has there any, been any kind of moments that really stand out where you're like, oh, I'm so proud of myself and this is a really big thing for me? You know, any performances, any nights, any things, you know, that you think, oh, wow, this is special, this? Yeah, I did um, a gig a couple of months ago for, um, I'm going to try and pronounce it and look like an idiot, last Society of Violet. Oh my God, I, I clearly oh. fa failed French when I did it at school because that was awful. Um, Violetta. There you are. See, I, I don't know if Wigan French is any better than um, Halifax French, but um, that was a big one for me that I did um, online. Um, other than that, I've kind of only done a couple of sort of... Um, stand up sort of open mic gigs i'm excited to get back out there when life is normal and uh do some more of them um yeah i've done i've done a lot of them from my own house and i'd like to get out and meet real people and be like oh yeah that'd be dead exciting well la, um, la violetta society are over in liverpool aren't they so i suppose if anyone's watching this and they've got some great nights in their town and um, you've got a car carl haven't you i have yeah you can drive she can drive, she can travel. So once we start doing these nights again, book her. Um, okay, so we'll start, I'll, I'll say goodbye to you now, Carla. Thank you so much, and I will see you soon. Thank you for your support of me, because um, Carla's a great support of coming, watching my stuff and buying my stuff as well. So it's just nice to see you, like, succeeding with your own work. I'm going to say bye yeah. to you now, and I'm going to just X you off, like, bye, Carla. Bye. Bye. Oh, I think she's gone. I love presenting. Um, come over to the old courts, sign up. I've got poetry mixtape once a month, which is a bit like me spinning my favourite poetry videos. So there's amazing poets on there. Um, and Carla's on one of the early ones, actually, so you can probably see more of her work there. Um, been a great evening, um, just wonderful humans. And just like to say thank you and goodbye. This is Nymphs and Fogs signing out. <laughs>